In today's video, how Dan lost 38 pounds in 12 weeks. His front went from this to this. Check out his love handles. They went from this to this. We're gonna talk about how much walking he did. That's right, the only cardio he did was walking. We're gonna talk about his diet, his training, his mindset, and why he was our champion of our last transformation challenge. And we're starting right now. Hey guys, this is Paul Arello from ProPhysique.com and I wanna introduce you guys to Dan Devine. Great interview with him. Now, if you wanna see the full interview, you can go check out the Pro Physique Code. That's our podcast. We have a second channel. I'll link it below. That's the Pro Physique Studio page. We post all of our YouTubes of our podcast. You can also find the podcast on all the platforms. I interviewed Dan. We got a long interview, but I'm gonna give you some highlights from the clips here just so you can see what he did to win our last transformation challenge. And he actually is taking part in our next challenge. That's right. We have an eight week summer sculpt that kicks off this week. Link below to join us there, fit processing slash challenge. Join us, $25,000 open worldwide. Meal plans and training plans updated every couple weeks as well. Private community group to help support you. And we're gonna help you make the transformation that you wanna make and help you understand how to manage that for the rest of your life. Okay, guys. Well, let's talk about the big picture of calories at the sure. start and then kind of where they got them to. So. Yeah. Give me a ballpark of what you had your calories or your macros or whatever method you used at the beginning. Sure thing. So I was around uh, 1800 calories to start. But one thing for your for your listeners who haven't done the sort of macro counting, counting is very different than constraining, right? So you can count pretty easily how much did I consume today? And if you only care right. about counting it, that's one thing. But if you're trying to fit into certain buckets of protein, carbs, and fats, and eating this thing is going to take you over one and be under another. It's it's there's a little bit more to it than just counting. So yeah. um, I I had to go through that learning curve when I first started. You know, day, day one of the challenge, it's like okay, I have a spreadsheet. So I didn't use any apps. I'm a spreadsheet guy. I had all my my I like having everything all in one place. So my workout schedule is in a spreadsheet in this whole you know huge workbook where I'm tracking everything, tracking my sleep. Tracking, I had projections about, you know, I know that weight loss is not linear, but I had a linear sort of projection after week one, I should be here, week two, I should be here. And I was always tracking according to that and kind of seeing what I needed to, to make some adjustments. But going back to your question about the macros, so I started out, you know, targeting that one gram of of, um, of protein per body weight, you know, so I started out at, at 190. So I was a little bit, I started a little lower than that one gram initially. Um and I was really super focused on the protein. I thought, you know, protein, protein, protein. Yeah. And I was under allocating on carbs in the beginning. And my energy level just really took a nosedive within the first few days. And I needed to make some quick adjustments to say, it's not all about protein. It's right. about a balance. And I needed to take the protein that down a little bit and up the carbs a little bit to make sure I had the energy. And then I make sure I was getting those throughout the day yeah. to have the energy because I just was really a few a few days in a row just really so you mentioned athlete. not being an athlete um what did you do in regards to like a cardio plan or a step plan and and sure. workouts for this yeah so from a cardio perspective i um i work from home three days a week and i have a treadmill desk so i've had that for i had that before the challenge started so i had already sort of built up my stamina in terms of walking and also you know both walking on the treadmill as well as outside the house. I mentioned during COVID, I didn't want to walk at all, but walking has become one of my favorite sort of um, hobbies. I love listening to music and podcasts uh, while walking. And that almost becomes like a therapy for me just to be able to go out and take a take a walk or go on the treadmill and take a walk. Yeah. But going back to the workout plan. So as I mentioned back in October is when I you know had this plan, I started working out six days a week. I have a home gym. So um, I kind of bought some additional equipment for the home gym, pretty simple stuff. But I started working out six days a week and I was pushing myself to do basically six sets of every exercise. So it was probably about a 90 minute to two hour type of workout that I was doing six days a week. Um, and I felt I needed to I needed to build muscle mass and I needed to build up stamina for myself because I knew when the challenge started, I wasn't going to be able to push myself that hard when I was in a calorie deficit. Yeah. And so sure. when the challenge started, I cut all my sets to, in half. So I went from six sets per exercise to three sets per exercise. I wasn't sure that, I, you know, based on my research, watching your videos and some other research, I wasn't sure that I really could be gaining new muscle in the calorie deficit and also with the cardio plan that I had. Um, so I didn't want to overexert myself by sticking to that six set 
and really drain myself. So I, I cut that in half to the uh, to the three sets, but I kept it to six days. How did your week. performance maintain? Because based on research, three sets should maintain muscle. Uh, so I used a metric of my my vo- my total volume per day. So mm-hmm. I would in my spreadsheet, uh, you know, had my everything tracked. So I didn't start tracking, by the way, until October. And so one of the biggest. I think one of the biggest impacts, so for folks who are out there who do, who, who go to the gym and stuff, if you're not tracking your workouts, I think you're missing out on, on something. You're not as serious as you probably should be until you start tracking those workouts. And so, you know, you can progressively overload for the next time and you don't have to second guess yourself. What did I do? You don't have to remember it, have it right there in an app, in a spreadsheet, write it down, whatever it is, you need to be tracking your workouts. So you know you, what you did last time and you can do a little bit more, whether it's one rep five pounds, whatever it is, you can do a little bit more the next time to kind of make that incremental progress. When you started out the diet, how long until you had to start making adjustments? Uh, I made adjustments within the first week. Because oh, you said you brought the carbs up the a carbs, little bit. Brought the carbs yeah. up, yeah. And then I think it was after about two weeks, I started doing a, a 50 calorie drop per week. So okay. I made sure that I was aligning my total calories to my, my weight because I didn't want to plateau. I didn't want to stay constant with my calories and then plateau. So I was always going down in calories as my weight went down and kind of keeping that in lockstep. Um, and so the protein less, you know, fewer changes on the protein, but you know, took away fat, took away carbs. I was trying not to go too deeply on the, on the calories to start because once you go too low, there's nothing else you can cut. So I wanted right. to do it sort of slowly, but surely, you know, take that down so that my body was, not getting used to anything, but I was constantly in in a, in that same sort of calorie deficit. But for me personally, my breakfast and my lunch were generally the same. Yeah. I start every day with a protein shake. I then, so I, I guess I would consider that sort of my first thing as a snack. I have a protein shake to start my day. I then have, I, I make overnight oats. So I have oatmeal, yogurt, and some type of berries as my breakfast. And I find that that sustains me in terms of energy and satiation for for the the good part of the morning. I'll then have like an apple or some uh, uh, a piece of fruit, you know, late late morning, early afternoon before my lunch. And my lunch was generally like a mixed green salad with whatever protein that we had, either left over from the prior dinner or whatever. Again, I always had either raw chicken or you know grilled chicken ready to go to throw into a salad. So that was kind of uh, my main staple. Um, and if I if I had to go to work, I would like bring a salad with me. So I was always prepared for those days that I was in the office. Again, I was in the office two days a week. Um, so I made sure I was prepared with with things. We had we had good good options there in the office too, like high protein yogurts and and things like that as well, and fruit. I want to talk about the transition since the challenge has ended. So it sounds like your calories did get pretty low, like towards the end there. You said what, what 13, 1400? I, no, I was about 1500. Yeah. Oh, 1500. Okay. I, I, I tried not to go below the 10X of okay, my. Okay. So you did that. Weight. And then yeah. what was your what was your step count or your cardio towards the very end? Well, towards the very end, I, I lightened up a little bit because, like in the last two weeks, because I was already. So, so one of my goals, if, if you remember, somebody had done the math to say, if you walk an average of 11,111 steps over the 90 days, that's going to give you a, mi- a million steps. And so I set my goal to be 2 million steps, which would be <laughs> 22,222. So my my daily average is around 25. I actually exceeded that. My daily, daily average is around 25,000 steps. Wow. I had some days where I was really, uh, I really had a high step count. In fact, on my birth, I turned 54 during the challenge. And on my birthday, this is going to sound kind of odd, but on my birthday, I want to do something special. And I walked 54,000 steps on my birthday. I created I knew a plan. before you said it, it was going to be your age. I knew it. <laughs> I, I worked out a plan in my spreadsheet. I said, this is how many steps I need to go per hour. You know, I don't I don't want to be walking till midnight. So I kind of, you know, planned it out. I planned out, you know, shoe changes and things like that to make sure that I I wasn't going to have any injuries and, and uh, blisters and things like that. And so... Yeah, it, that worked out very well. Uh, I, I did I did over fifty thousand four thousand steps on on my birthday. So yeah, my step count was really great. I ended up with two point two million steps over the span of the challenge. So uh, I know that's a lot for your listeners. No, that's that was part of that was my part of my plan though. I knew I, I knew something I could do I've that. ever I've never thought of the total number of steps in a given yeah. period. I'm you know we pay attention to the daily. Sure. Yeah, um, the daily was around around twenty five thousand. Just just under twenty five thousand. Toward the end there, I kind of trailed off a little bit. 
but most days it was over 20,000 steps. You've had this focus for obviously for you for six months. Yeah. So how are you transitioning that into this next phase for you? That's a great question. And I think I, I probably am struggling with that a little bit. Um, I've been very much looking forward to this interview. And so that's kind of kept my mind occupied to sort of focus on this and anticipate the questions and, and answers and such. Um, and so I am, I'm kind of reflecting on how I want to apply what I've learned from this in some way to continue to make my life better in some other facet of my life. So what I proved to myself is that with this planning and this focus, I really can accomplish anything I want to accomplish. And so it's a model and a framework that I can apply to something else. What that something else is, uh, I haven't quite figured out yet. Uh, I'm still you know, thinking about that, but I do now certainly have the confidence that with that laser focus, yeah. And uh, in planning that I, I I believe that I can I can do anything that I want to do. And did you use hormone therapy replacement? TRT has become like buying creatine, right? It's just it's something that a lot of people are doing. So, you know, we kind of discussed it off off podcast, but share your thoughts on that. Sure. Yeah. So I I my testosterone levels are but testosterone levels. I had my my blood work done back in August August of last year. I had it done two weeks ago, right after the challenge, I was curious about how it had changed. It didn't change dramatically. I am not on TRT. I've never taken steroids in, in my life, never needed to. And so um, never wanted to. I'm, I'm focused on longevity. I'm 54 years old right now. I'm in a much healthier place than I was, as I mentioned, just two years ago. I want to live a long, healthy, productive life. I do not want to, you know, compromise or complicate that with drugs just for some superficial reason. So that's not part of my lifestyle whatsoever. I do understand that people who haven't been at that low body fat percentage might have that impression. But again, being six feet tall and 152 pounds, right? Uh, it, it, the illusion is, is, is very, well, and you're not, you're not someone who's been a bodybuilder for 30 years, right? right. So you're, no. you know, resistance training is, is on the newer side for you. So it is, it is. Yeah. Um, it's, this is where I think the confusion lies, you know, especially in my field, especially in today's environment where TRT, while listen, my best friend in the whole world had double testicular cancer. He's been on TRT for more than a decade because he has to. Sure. Right? Absolutely. So yeah. I have There's no problem. reasons for it. Yeah, yeah. Of course. It's a miracle drug. Like, absolutely it is. Um, but it's a rather new science. And I'm like, I'm still a little nervous about getting involved in something that that's kind of new. I'm 48, lifetime natural. And honestly, I, I feel the best I've ever felt. Now, I have been in the gym for 30 years. So when I diet down, I'm closer to 200 pounds at 6'3", sure. which is a decent physique. I do well at bodybuilding, but there's guys that are much more dense and more muscular than me. And even they will get the the questions, the remarks. Um, but I, I'm just a firm believer. And this is a meritocracy. Like the longer you are consistent in the gym, consistent with your diet, your body is changing over yeah. that that time. So it's going to be really fun to see your journey now that you've kind of got these tools and this this motivation and thank you uh, what you do next. Thank you. I, I want to I just want to call out you know the the content that you produce is on on YouTube in particular. That's really where I where I found you and, and watch most of your your information there. I really do enjoy, appreciate, and respect that you cut through a lot of the BS. You you give people really solid science backed information not some of this bogus other stuff that that other influencers are are pitching and that's what made me start to subscribe to your channel start to to listen to what you were saying and and really um you know that created a turning point for me so i really want to thank you on behalf of your other wa listeners watchers etc that you know look, look at your content and and really look forward to that those next videos like i do to because you you are sharing a lot of great information that if people take it and, and apply it and that consistency is key it's it's not just doing it for a few days right. or a few weeks it's it's sticking with it the basics work um again i as i mentioned i have a home gym i have nothing special here no special machines are needed if you have that consistency and you lift those weights and you focus on your diet if, if all those things come together you eventually will see results and so that's what you're you're sharing in in almost every one of your your videos um and i'm an example of someone who you know 
didn't want to get up off the couch. Uh, and, and, and yeah, that was, you know, two, two plus years ago and it's changed my life. And, uh, really want to thank you for, you know, the content you're producing and to, to, um, to encourage other people if they want to jump into the challenge. I think it's a great, you know, first of all, the Facebook group is spectacular. The most supportive group of people that I've ever met on the internet. There <laughs> yeah, right. is like zero negativity there. Everyone is so supportive. It's competitive, but people are helping each other, answering questions. Uh, it's really a unique place from people with, of all shapes, sizes, ages, backgrounds, places in the world. It's it's really remarkable. The the people that you're attracting are wonderful people, which I think is a testament to the message that you're sending. Yeah, I mean, all the coaches that get in there and help, all the participants that get in there and share their journeys. I mean, it's it's motivating for me. I I love going in there and you know people sharing recipes, people picking yeah. each other up when they've had a bad day. We've had Absolutely. a couple of people you know go through some you know loss of a family or you know get sick yeah. and you know um, yeah. So that's for me. You know. Uh, someone told me years ago that content is king, but community is kingdom. And I've always focused on the the community that we yep. built around this lifestyle, this sport. So um, in the future, I hope to be doing a live event and inviting everybody to come and meet up and do these. That'd be great. Things. So I'd be, yeah. uh, I'd be all in on that. So awesome. Well, thank you, Dan. I appreciate you taking the time today. Thank you, um, thanks for all that you do. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Well, I'm proud of you and uh, I can't wait to take part in the new, the new group. I'll be in there this week. And I'll Excellent. Look Looking forward to that. Talk to you soon. All right. All right. Thanks, Paul. Take care. All right, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that interview with Dan. Now, as a reminder, if you want to watch the full interview, we have that on our podcast page, Pro Physique Studio, or you can just type in any podcast and see it. And final reminder, guys, our next transformation challenge is kicking off right now, the Summer Sculpt. Hope to see you in there. Private group. I'll be doing a live video very soon in there answering all your questions. Thank you guys for watching.